Hello everybody, my name is Kurt Blue and welcome to part 9 in the stream I'll do a tutorial series. Now before we get started I want to apologise as I am extremely tired. I've just woken up and I'm going to be heading out to the hospital soon. So I thought I would try and, uh, try and squeeze in a quick video for you guys. So in this video we're going to be covering um, the basics of hood painting. Now this video is going to be in two parts. The first part will be the basics. The second part will be going into a bit more depth on how we can create... Um, you know useful things, but for now we're just going to be drawing basic shapes and and understanding how that works now Some people come up to me and said to me in the previous uh, about the previous video that they didn't fully understand hooks now I can't really explain it in any better way myself um, If you still don't understand it, I'm, I'm just gonna have to recommend you go and read a wiki page on it That might help but as I stated, a hook is basically code or function that will execute on a certain event when it's told to. Um, so let's say, for example, we had the player, sorry if you can hear my keyboard, but we had the player spawn hook. Any code that's linked to that would be executed whenever a player is spawned. Um, so yeah, I hope that makes sense. But anyway, enough of that. We're going to be doing the hood painting today. So what what is hood painting uh let me just go ahead and whoops let me just quickly launch my garage mod here real quick okay now basically what we're going to be doing is oh i believe my garage mod just crashed thank you uh, basically what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be writing a basic hood that's going to show a square we're going to go over how it, it is used and how it has to be in, for example, a, a specific hook to draw the hood. So here we go, we're in game. Now let's go ahead and go into our file. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and simply go hook dot, whoops, hook dot add. And we're going to go ahead and change this to Jumad Lua. There you go. And it's going to be hook dot add. And then here is the name of the hook. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up the Gmod wiki and show you the hook that we're using and why we're using it. Um, so if I go ahead and bring this up here, and we search for hood paint, this one. As you can see, this says it's called whenever the hood should be drawn, called right before these two. Now, don't worry about these. They're just so you can layer, in a sense. But basically, hood paint is exactly like a think hook, in a sense that it's called every frame, except it's not. It can be called multiple times a frame. And on top of that, it's also called in a specific order that, that is called to draw the hood. Now, if you try to do this in a think hook, it's simply not going to draw anything. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to make the hook. Oops, hood paint. Now we're going to come up with a ute name, uh, draw my hood. And again, you have to excuse my my talking and my typing. Uh, I woke up, as you can see by the time, it's like 8 a.m. over here. Um, so then we're going to do a function, whoops, right inside the bracket here, um, like we did before. Remember, you don't have to do it inside the bracket like that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, before we get started, I am going to quickly launch Photoshop. And if Photoshop doesn't like crashing on me, oh, wow. All right, okay, so now I'm going to create a new file. Now, I want to explain, um, like, almost all of you should have done some form of graphing in school. Um, in a sense that, you know, here is your graph, here is 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I said plot point at 5, 2, you would plot the point, well, it would be 2, 5. You go 2 on the x and then 5 on the y, and this is where you'd plot your point. Now, I hope that makes sense. You're going to have to excuse my terrible drawing. But that's how, that's how you reference positions on the screen. A screen is basically one giant grid. Being the very top left is 0, 0. The length of the X being the, the width of your screen. Um, so say mine's 1920. So this would be 1920 over here. And then the down is the height of your screen, which in my case is 1080. So we could put 1080. Or 1080 would be down here. So then this corner point would be... One, whoops, one nine twenty by ten eighty. Now you can reference any point on this grid like that. So let's say I wanted to do it um, in the you know uh, slightly off the top left of my screen. I could say I want to go twenty across on the x, which would be here, and then twenty down on the y, which would be here. And this is where I would be drawing my shapes. So that's how we can reference a position on the screen is by using an x and y position on this graph. If you don't know graphing, go ahead and research it. It's a very basic subject in maths, and I'm sure you pick it up very quickly if you don't already know it. And that's how we can reference it. So now we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to draw some stuff. So we're going to go simple. We're just going to do draw dot rounded box, just like that. Then the corner radius is going to be zero. 
and here we'll do zero zero and for the width and the height we're simply just going to do 100 100 and then for the color we're just going to create a color like we've already done before in the in the entities video so the color we'll create is a nice kind of greeny color so this is it for now now i'm going to explain what it does in a minute but let's go ahead and go in our code and we're going to do lua underscore open script underscore cl test dot lua and as you can see now up in the very top left of my screen there is a green box now if I go back to the code, let's explain what's happening. So first of all, we're drawing a rounded box. And to access the draw library, we simply do draw dot. Now, the, the function we're calling is obviously rounded box. This first parameter is how rounded the box is. So let's say I put something like 5 in here, and I rerun my script. You notice how the edge of that box is kind of rounded? And if I put something like 10 in here, and I rerun my script, you'll see now how the edges of that box is even more rounded. So that's the roundedness. Now. These two variables here, or these two parameters, sorry, this is the x position and this is the y position um, on the screen. So let's say I did something like uh, 100 on the x and I left it at 0 on the y. It's going to move over. You see how it's moved over from the left of the screen, but it's still at the top of the screen because I moved over on the x. Now, I can also do the exact same for the y. I could go 100 down. Whoops. And now when I go 100 down, as you can see, it has gone down. Now, these two parameters here, these are the width and the height. Now, something to note about the width and the height is let's say I, I say I'm drawing a box at this position. When I define the width and the height, the width always goes left and the height always goes down. So let's say I specified this point on my screen and I said 100 by 100 is going to go 100 across, 100 down. So even though I specified this point, the box actually draws all the way around here. Now, what I do is I just set the width to 100 and the height to 100. But I could set the height to, say, 50, and you'll see that it's then a rectangle. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put this back up to 100. And the last parameter is the color of our, uh, of our box. Now, we can, uh, for those of you who don't know, say we have a color variable. We can only put three parameters. But if we wanted to, we could go and do the other parameter, which is the alpha, or the transparency. And 255 being fully visible and 0 being completely invisible, we could do something like 150 here. And now when I run it, as you can see, our box is slightly see-through. I hope you can see that. Um, so yeah. Now what we can do also is we can draw as many things as we want, one after the other. But something that you need to note is that the way how these work is they they draw in order. So let's say I did something like this. Uh, 250, 250. We'll do them all at 100. But this time we're going to change the color to 255, 120, 120. Here I'm going to change the color to 120, 255, 120. Here I'm going to change the color to 120, 120, 255. So remember, you don't have to remember these specific colors. Um, they're just colors that I'm putting in. Uh, and then lastly, we'll go ahead and we'll just do the red again. So there you go. So now when I go ahead and run this, it's going to draw four rounded boxes. But you kind of notice how they're on top of each other in the order that they were drawn. Uh, so you see how this one, which is the first one to be drawn, is underneath the last one to be drawn, for example. Um, so yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, remember, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Now, if I go back to the wiki and I search draw, as you can see here, there's libraries and there's the library draw. Now, in here, as you can see, there's, there's, there's a few functions. And normally, there's enough in here to get anybody past what they want to do. Now, you can use the surface library, which we'll go over in the next video. And the surface library is a much more... Um, advanced version in a sense you know you can do a lot more but let's go back to the draw library and take a look now there's stuff like um, draw dot rounded box which is what we're using so let's go ahead and look at simple text so now the description of this is draws text on the screen obviously now we call it just like the rounded box except it takes different parameters it takes the text it takes the font it takes the x position the y position the color and the x align and the y align now if you're curious of what these are you can see down here text is the text to be drawn the font is the font we'll be taking a look at that next uh, x is the x coordinate y is the y coordinate that's the position on the screen um, this is the color of the text and this is the alignment so you can like if you've ever used word or anything that handles text you've probably been able to align the text to the left to the right or to the center that's pretty much what the aligns are they're just numbers that represent each different one so let's go ahead now and take a look at this so let's call this um, so we're just going to copy and paste because I'm lazy now 
We're going to put it here at the bottom of our code. Now, we're going to go ahead and for the text, we're going to do hello world because what else could we do? So we'll do that and then we'll go to the font and the font we're going to leave blank for now. I'll explain why in a minute. So the X position is going to be zero for me. The Y position is also going to be zero. The color is going to be a color of 255-120-120. I have no idea why I like that color, but I do. Um, and then for the aligns, we're just going to do zero, zero. Um, so zero means uh, to the top left and yeah, zero means to the top left. So we're going to be doing all the aligning to the top left. Now about this font thing. Now a font has to be created by yourself. Now by created by yourself, I don't mean you have to create the font, but you have to create in the sense of reference to the font, I guess. And if we go ahead and go to this wiki page, surface.createFont, you can see there's a lovely example here of a font. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that into our code and go through it. Now, don't ever put this in a think hook or a hood paint hook, because if you rapidly recreate fonts, you're going to insanely lag the game. So you don't want to be doing that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this top part. This is the name of your font. You can name this whatever you want. It doesn't matter as long as you don't name it the same as something else, otherwise they'll override each other. Now, this font is the actual font, the, the actual font file. So in this case, we're using Arial. This is the size of the font, so I'm going to do 20. So this is how you change the size of the font that you're drawing at. Then the blur size is the blurriness, the scan lines are the scan lines when the value changes. Uh, Anti-alias, I can never say that properly, but you want that to true. If you set it to false, your text will look all jagged. And the line is pretty self-explanatory. So is italic, strikeout, symbol, rotary. They're all self-explanatory. Shadow just allows a little shadow underneath it. Additive makes it, I believe, so that it's slightly transparent and adds to the background color of the text. So it's easily read on all different colors. And then outline will simply draw an outline to it. So when we put the font, we simply put the name of the font that we created, which is called whatever. So in here, we'll do whatever. And we'll save it. We'll go ahead and we'll run our script. And there you go, up in the very top left, in tiny right, and it says hello world. But we can come to our, our code here, and we can change the font size to be 100. And then when we rerun our script, as you can see, it is much bigger. So I hope that makes sense to you. Um, in the next video, we'll be doing a bit more advanced, such as a health bar and stuff like that. So I hope you learned something in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.